Earlier in this lesson, you learned to balance chemical equations. And you, you also learned how to use a balanced chemical equation to arrive at conclusions about the yield, limiting reactants, and such. However, just because you can write a chemical equation doesn't mean that the chemical reaction that you're trying to describe actually occurs. In other words, for there to be a chemical equation, there has to be a chemical reaction. So let's discuss what are some ways of uh, showing that a chemical reaction is happening. We're gonna be focusing on chemical reactions in aqueous solutions. So let's look at some ways of showing, of giving evidence that a chemical reaction has happened. In class, we have discussed the difference between physical changes and chemical changes. We are now studying chemical reactions specifically. So what are some ways that we can observe a change and determine or at least make a good guess that it is a chemical change? Well, there are some changes that are expected. For example, I have here some water with blue food dye and here's some water. I mean, I would expect that if I simply take a drop of the intense blue and I put it in the water here, I would expect that one to get a lighter color because all I'm doing is I'm diluting the dye. There is no chemical change involved. There seems to be a color change, but actually it's not. It's just a change in the intensity of the color. Here I have one that's yellow and one that's blue. Now, what do you think would happen if I took some of the blue and pulled a drop of blue into the yellow solution? You might have known this from your elementary school art classes. Well, let's see what happens. I'm gonna drip it down. And what I see is that what used to be yellow is now turning green. Because we know that if we mix yellow and blue, we get green. Those are primary colors getting combined into a secondary color. But we know that it is an expected uh, change in color. Now in here I have two samples. They both seem to be colorless. So I would expect that if you mix them, nothing should happen. Well, let's see if that's the case. Remember, our expectation is that there should be no change here. Whoops, it turned pink. In other words, this was an unexpected color change. That is an indicator that there's possibly a chemical reaction going on in there. Let's try this other one. Here again, I have two test tubes, each with liquid in them, colorless. Again, I would expect that if I combine them, I should have no observable change. Let's see what happens. Whoops. I'm getting not only a color change, but if we observe carefully, particularly the sides of this test tube that I'm holding here, the yellow one, there's like a solid being formed. So not only was there a color change here, but actually what happened was that a solid was formed that was not there before. If we allow this to settle for a little while, that solid will settle to the bottom and we'll see that it is a yellow solid. We call this a precipitation reaction and it is another indicator of chemical reactions. Another indication of a chemical reaction is the formation of a gas product. Now, again, we have to be careful of what we observe. Here are two test tubes with water in them. Let's say I take some from one side and I squirt it very hardly into the other one. You can see how bubbles were formed, right? Even if I simply were to take this one here, let's go ahead and cover it with a stopper and just shake it. 
you can see where bubbles formed, right? Well, we expect that because air got pressured into the liquid and it didn't want to stay there, so it bubbled out. That is an expected type of quote unquote bubbling. Now, let's see what happens in this case here. I have again two solutions, and I'm going to take some from the left and I'm going to pour it into the one in the right. Now, what I'm going to do is instead of squirting it, I am going to very slowly let it trickle down the side of the tube and let's see what happens. Again, you can see the intense bubbling happening because a gas is being formed. This is not something we expected. This is not due to the simple mixing of the two liquids that are trapping air inside. This is actually a chemical reaction that is creating a gas product. And you can see that it stays on for a little while, unlike the simple air bubbles that dissipated right away. Another indicator of chemical reactions is, again, an unexpected change in temperature. I had two test tubes here with two different solutions. They're both at room temperature for a while. You can read the temperature on the one on the left, roughly about 21, 22 degrees. Now let's see what happens when I add some of the solution from the left side into that one. Look at that thermometer go up. You can even see some kind of like misting over here above the solution. In other words, an unexpected change in temperature, particularly as drastic as this one, is another indicator of a possible chemical reaction. Okay, let's summarize what we just saw. Here are some of the observations that give us evidence of a chemical reaction happening. One is an unexpected change of color. We also discussed the formation of a precipitate. We can also have the formation of a gas, it's also evidence. An unexpected change in temperature. And although I did not have a demo for it, also a production of light can be evidence of a chemical reaction. All right, so let's go ahead now and study what happens in solutions with water as the salt. Let's look at some chemical reactions in aqueous solutions.